Well, brothers and sisters, the Lord is with you. And also with you. We continue listening to God speak to us from the gospel in the tradition of Luke. Glory to you, Lord. On the journey towards Jerusalem, Jesus passed between the borders of Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering the village, ten people approached him with leprosy. They kept their distance. They raised their voices and said, Teacher, have pity on us. Jesus saw them and he responded, Go and show yourself to the priests. On their way, they were healed. One of them, realizing what had happened, came back praising God in a loud voice. The healed person fell down at the feet of Jesus and spoke praises. This one was a Samaritan. Jesus took the occasion to say, One out of ten made whole. Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give thanks except this foreigner? He said to the Samaritan, get up and go your way, because your faith has healed you. This is the gospel, the good news of our salvation. Thanks. Praise Praise Lord. Lord. By the words of the gospel, may our sins be blotted out. Amen. Amen. Once again, good morning. And we celebrate today a Mass of Thanksgiving, not because of any particular reason other than Thursday is Thanksgiving Day. And part of our call as Christians, as we heard in the first reading and the second reading, is to give thanks to God. Today is also the last Sunday of the church year, and it's also referred to as the Feast of Christ the King, which I have a big problem with. Um, the Feast of Christ the King was something that originated in the 1910s, but we won't go into all that right now, but this is something that I can't see the image of Jesus with a gold crown on. Hopefully you'll agree with them. It's also the last time you'll be seeing green until the middle of January. Next week is the first Sunday of Advent, the beginning of the new church year, and Rebecca's clapping. <laughs> and, you know, today as we take some time, not only here at the liturgy, but afterwards and also during the week, to give thanks to God for the many gifts we have. It's also an opportunity for us to sort of think about a New Year resolution because the church year begins next Sunday. And making resolutions should not be something way out there that we can't even possibly attempt to complete. Maybe something as simple as every morning before you, when you get out of bed or at night before you go into bed, to make a very simple sign of gratitude. There's a, um, a European philosopher. His name is Meister Eckhart, E-C-K-H-A-R-T. And I came across this week and he said, if the only prayer you ever say is thanks, that would be sufficient. How many of us really are grateful for what we have? <clears throat> How many of us take for granted what we have? I think now that we're in this horrendous time, what's called a pandemic, you could call it a lot of other things too, but we'll use the word pandemic. Maybe it makes us realize even more what we have to be grateful for. Let, this morning in the Sun Sentinel, which I still get the paper delivered, but I'm sure you're not surprised at that because I've, <laughs> I've just done all this technology stuff. On the front page, there was a picture of a new bar that we opened down on the waterfront. 
something called the wharf, I believe. No masks, no social distancing. And, and people still don't get it. Uh, what, what do we have to do? We have to have somebody literally hit us in the head? Yeah, I just don't understand it. But that's, that's enough with that. When we complete this year, which is today, the last Sunday, we're finishing up with the Gospel of Matthew. Today we hear from the Gospel of Luke. Next week we begin parts of the Gospel of Mark, included with John. But the Gospel of Luke today is very different than the other Gospels. Anybody know why? No remarks. <laughs> the Gospel of Luke is the only gospel that was not written by a Jew. So what does he highlight in the, in the reading this morning? He highlights a person who was cured but wasn't part of the group. Okay? And he tells all ten of them to what? Go show yourself. Go to the temple. Show yourself to the priest. The nine of them did. They were faithful Jews, keeping the law, going to say, look at us, we're clean. Let us, let us re-enter society. And the Samaritan, who didn't have to go to the temple, says thank you. Now, which is the bigger sign of gratitude? Going to the temple? So they could be returned to society or saying thanks. And Luke, because he isn't a Jew, he picks out the one person, the Samaritan, to say thanks. Something for us to think about. We gather with a limited number of people here, which is wonderful. There could be more. That's another story. And do we truly experience this, the attitude of gratefulness? The word Eucharist that we use for the Mass, liturgy, the word Eucharist very simply means in thanksgiving. So every time we gather, we show that gratitude. And one of the things that we were doing before this strange time when we gathered either at Advent or during Lent on a Wednesday night, we would use other forms of prayer. Just a celebration of the word with communion, a meditation, benediction, stations of the cross, so there's more than one way to say thank you, even though we use the word Eucharist for Thanksgiving. So as we continue on during this week, probably with a lot of memories of what used to be, with hopes of what will again be, let's take the time to say thank you. Not only to God, but to each other. Because each one of us is a sign of gratitude. Each one of us is the person who can bring empty, to fulfill a person who's empty with God's presence. And I tell you this once before, probably at the end of the summer, I've noticed people seem to be a little more kind to each other, especially in public. taking you literally and showing you where what you're looking for instead of saying on aisle five. Maybe some good will come out of this. Besides the vaccine. And hopefully we can, as a nation, come together and say thank you. And may God's will be done. Pray for me as I pray for you. And may God bless us and keep us May God's face shine upon us and give us peace now and always. Amen. Amen. Amen.